Top Bed Talk. Monty Mython here. As we prepare to move into the next phase of the COVID crisis, we're going to be widening our focus here on Top Bed Talk. We will continue to deliver COVID-specific programmes, but we all have a huge additional responsibility as we try to reboot normal services. So although this piece is not directly related to COVID-19, we believe it's information that is crucial to the bigger task of rebuilding the healthcare system as we learn to adapt and live with this new virus. Thank you to our sponsors and to you, our listeners, for helping us to share this important information. Nick Majerison here, and of course, regular listeners to Top Med Talk will know it was at this time of year that Anesthesia 2020 was planned in Manchester. Unfortunately, it has been postponed to next year. So, all this week, we're playing some clips from last year's excellent conference. Enjoy. Okay, hi, Monty Mython here, Editor-in-Chief of Top Med Talk, coming to you live from Anesthesia 2019, here in the heart of London, near St Paul's, the Cathedral. I'm sitting down with a friend of Top Med Talk, loyal supporter, Professor Mike Grocott from Southampton, and College Council member, just elected as... Vice President. Vice President of the Royal College of Anesthetists. Get that. What's happening there, Mike? Do you get a car? Do you get a driver? Uh, no. You get, you get all the jobs that, that Ravi doesn't want to do. <laughs> the President. Ravi, Ravi Mahajan, Ravi Mahajan, the, Mahajan president. the President. And you're one yeah. of two Vice Presidents. Aren't you? Yeah. Take, who's the other? Fiona Donnell. Excellent. Well, fantastic choices. Well, well done, both of you. Thank you. And you're taking over from previous Vice Presidents? Uh, from Janice Fisakali. Yep. Uh, Who we were just chatting to. Indeed. Yeah. Did a fantastic job. Uh, and Simon. And Simon Fletch. That's as we, Fletch, as we, call, yeah, as we yeah. call him. Now, we've just been joined by a person who's taken on a, a, a job that we've been talking about on Top Med Talk now for a few weeks, if not months. This new Centre for Perioperative Care. What's that about, Mike? So, launched yesterday yeah. at Anesthesia 2019, uh, a multi specialty, multidisciplinary centre uh, based at the Royal College of Anesthetists, but pulling together. Um, professionals from across the healthcare spectrum focusing on improving the care of patients undergoing surgery. And, and you just announced the new director, yes. who is? Uh, I could let him announce himself. Who is? Is, is that why he's sitting here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I wondered who you were. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, David Selwyn. David, well done, mate. So congratulations. Congr- congratulations, all joking aside. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm really excited. I think it's uh, uh, a huge opportunity f- to improve the, uh, the whole surgical pathway for our patients and a huge opportunity for the college and all of the colleges to uh, really drive forward some of the uh, strong background that we, we've done with the uh, perioperative um, uh, journey so far. So, so Dave, um, I think I'm right in saying that you've got considerable operational experience in the NHS. Is that a reasonable way of expressing that? Uh, I think that's probably fair. I've had a fairly tortuous leadership journey from a sort of lead clinician, well before that actually as a as a regional advisor uh, for about eight years and then as a, a, a lead clinician up through a clinical director, divisional director and deputy medical director. So you... <clears throat> You know how to get things done in the NHS, and you know where, why you can't get some things done in the NHS. Where's, and where's your glass? Half full, half empty from that perspective at the moment in the NHS? Uh, half full. Good man. Otherwise you wouldn't have got the job, yeah, I don't think. Yeah. So how's, how's the centre? What, 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 what's the... Uh, the short-term goals. What? What did you? Are you allowed to tell us what you told them at interview that you'd get? Done <laughs> no, you don't want to hear what I said at interview. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, um, you got the job. <laughs> so, so uh, in effect, this is this is initial uh, three-year program, and we've set up some short-term uh, uh, goals over the first year, really, and that's particularly around structure and process. So that's setting up the centre, setting up the governance, setting up the uh, uh, the various groups. Uh, and uh, driving forward some of the initial um, uh, uh, areas of, uh, of focus that have come out of the, the previous work and the back of the PQIP uh, program, all of those sort of aspects. And then into the, the, the second and third year, it's obviously sl- slightly depends on how things go, but it, it's more about setting up perioperative care as a, uh, on, a, on a much more formal basis, involving all of the multiple stakeholders. So remember, it's not just anaesthesia or critical care that are involved in this. It's all of the other colleges and all of the other uh, specialties. And it's seeing w- where we can take that and uh, where we can get to with the whole of the, the concept. So Mike, uh, tough decision choosing the leader for this role. You had some fantastic candidates. We had some really excellent candidates. Um, 
who I hope we will see again. So there's going to be other roles advertised, uh, as Dave knows, as, as a deputy director, there's a fellows role, and there, there will be, a, I think, a substantial number of leadership roles across uh, the centre. Uh, but, yeah, some, some really great candidates came forward. So if people want to know more about CPOC and want to get engaged with the CPOC journey... Where do they go to? Well, Dave now. Obviously. So obviously, <laughs> obviously, the email Dave directly. I'll just give you his mobile phone number. <laughs> so I think very much via the college at the moment, CPOC, CPOC the Centre for Preparative Care, is now on the college website, and there'll be contacts there to, for the admin team. Uh, and and we are really uh, seeking engagement and, and looking out. I think it's fair to say, Dave. Is it a yeah. physical thing or a virtual thing or a bit of both? Um, so, so I think uh, the 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 v- uh, vision would be that it will be a bit of both. So initially, it's it's mainly about as I sort of described creating the structure and and the processes. But actually, in the future, uh, there, there's the opportunity to for it to be very physical. Excellent. Well, as the stuff I've seen is that I think it's got six major themes at the moment. It's got improving quality of care, supporting patients, supporting professionals, influencing policy. Technology and digital research and innovation. Now that's a pretty, that's uh, seeming to fix the world as we know it. I, the only reason I know that is we're sitting opposite the, this stand. So I go over your shoulder, I can read the pull up that has the six bullet points on it. Did you know that that's where your themes were? Yeah, I think I had a slide on that in, yeah. my, uh, in my interview. <laughs> what, but what, in truth, we're, we're building on, the, on what uh, you led at the, at the college, uh, Monty, uh, in terms of the Paraltive Medicine Leadership Group and starting to flesh out you know, the clinical guidelines. Uh, making sure the guidelines are implemented. And, and the policy piece, I think, fits very neatly with uh, the college's approach, which has been much more outward-looking yes. and policy-focused in the last couple of years. And, and I think that's got traction. To, to Dave, I know you, you weren't here yesterday, but it was really uh, gratifying. So a- Aidan Fowler, yes. uh, National Director of Patient Safety in England uh, and one of the Deputy Medical Directors uh, of the NHS, uh, sorry, the De- Department of Health and Social Care. And uh, so a couple of name checks very excited that the NATSIPS, um, the National Safety Standards for Interventional Procedures, were going to be uh, adopted by um, CPOC. So I, I think it, it, there's a huge opportunity in terms of that kind of impact. And we are would appear to be the envy of many parts of the world as we've been around doing interviews. They've, they've seen this, the perioperative medicine journey, the college beneath this, and now this final the final is the wrong way of saying it. It was the five in the five year part of the vision was to work towards if it all went well, this multidisciplinary cross-college endeavour as a centre for perioperative care. Do you, do you think we're at risk of leading too much of it? How are we going to not uh, make it just an anaesthesia thing? Uh, so, so I, no, I don't see that as a particular risk. Uh, I think there are so many other stakeholders involved that um, uh, we will get their benefit and their insight and, and, and their, their help. Uh, you know, obviously, anaesthesia has a, uh, a key role in all of this. Uh, but I think this is about changing the whole pathway and uh, designing and developing something that is better for us all and particularly better for our patients. I think the, the, the aspect for the, the global strategy is interesting. I think uh, hopefully we can, we can really make some progress here in the UK. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll be obviously uh, talking with uh, uh, counterparts uh, across the world and, and hopefully they'll be talking with us and we can, we can uh, tie all of that work in. And internally, I mean, my experience, and you followed on from me, Mike, for the perioperative medicine thing within the college, I'm just really gratified how supportive the other colleges were. None of them saw it as some sort of pitch battle. They all seemed to say, we're all in this together. We've got this challenge if we're going to continue to look after patients as best as we possibly can. We've got limited resources, so we've got to go at it together. And that... uh, any so, resistance in this new state? Not at all. And I remember you uh, reflecting to me that, that and, and I, I always felt slightly sceptical about it, but having sort of gone around the same round of meetings, uh, it's completely pushing at an open door and I think a um, huge amount of, of enthusiasm and support for this. And, and political support as well. I think we're, we're hitting a sweet spot with uh, some of the, the digital innovation that's coming on board and, and the, the political uh, agenda as well. So hopefully we can, we can really uh, drive this forward. So the technology and digital bullet point, uh, any thoughts as to how, what you're going to do about that in the short term? 
It's a big. It's a lot of buzz about. <laughs> yeah. We're doing a thing this morning. The AI uh, this evening. Sorry, we're doing a, an event this evening about artificial intelligence. Uh, a sort of small group conversation about AI machine learning. It's a very buzz topics at the moment. But aren't there simpler digital things we could be getting on with? I, I think there's a there is a scope of this. There there are simple things to you use technology to make our lives better and. and uh, the recent Topol report was talking about uh, giving us back time to enable yes. us to do do things, and I think that's very welcome. I think if you look at uh, some documents such as the future of surgery from the College of Surgeons, yes. you know, clearly surgery is not just that actually uh, technology is changing, the whole of surgery is changing, and, and the, uh, the type of surgeons that we'll produce as well as the, uh, the, the type of techniques that we use. So I think all of those things are coming together, and, uh, and of course... A key aspect for us all is, is is sharing the technology and using data to to make these decisions. And uh, um, uh, the, the digital health record is an absolute uh, uh, key component of of this and, and where we get to with that. And, and a lot of this builds on activity that's going on out there. I mean, particularly so app development. I've, I know of several apps in different uh, places around the country uh, that people are driving. I, th- I think there's a very healthy competition in that regard. Mm. And we must uh, we must be liberal about that. I think that, that these things get difficult when we be, when people become controlling in the whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, any any final thoughts from you, Mike? Before we let the the no, big, did, the big delighted man have delighted to have uh, Dave <laughs> taken on this role. G- great to have uh, to have launched the whole thing yesterday. I think I think you've got a real following wind to start with, and um, and you know really looking forward to seeing it grow. The Dave Selwyn, new director of the Centre for Parative Care, currently housed at the Royal College of Anesthetists, but a big tent open to everyone. Final thoughts? Yeah, uh, very exciting for, for us, very exciting for our patients, but actually for the people who are listening to this, please get involved. Get involved. Thank you very much indeed. Top Med Talk. Desiree Chapel here. Just a quick reminder, subscribe to Top Med Talk. We're a daily source of news and conversation focused on perioperative care. We bring you all the latest talk from all the major conferences in the perioperative space. We can also be found on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and we now have a free mailing list with special offers and additional goodies for subscribers. Go check us out at topmedtalk.com. That's www.topmedtalk.com.